This edition of the Rhode Island Spotlight is brought to you by Amica Insurance, a proud partner with Junior Achievement of Rhode Island. On a Tuesday in late January, six weeks before the pandemic would shut down schools in Rhode Island, the Brown University wrestling team fanned out to classrooms across the Hoxie Elementary School in Warwick. It is a tradition for the team going back years. Working with Junior Achievement of Rhode Island to reach students of varying grade levels and deliver JA's message of work readiness, financial literacy, and entrepreneurship through a variety of programs. This one is called JA in a Day. With the younger students, like it, it, it's that connection. It's like you can almost see it dawn on their face like, oh, I get this. Alicia Wells-Smith is one of JA's longest serving volunteers, beginning nearly 30 years ago. She is one of nearly 600 volunteers the nonprofit organization has enlisted to reach thousands of students every year. The first graders, you know, they want to hug you. They're open. They're, you know, they're so excited. And in the third grade, they're starting to just be a little sort of, you know, losing that. They're starting to get a little bit of an edge. Um, but when you do fun things with them, they're still like kind of all over it. Junior Achievement of Rhode Island is marking its 100th anniversary of helping students succeed when they get out into the workplace with practical skills that often aren't part of a regular school curriculum. Over the past century, it has reached more than 400,000 students in kindergarten through grade 12 in Rhode Island. But J.A. here has also adapted to changing times, technology, and the needs of the kids it serves. The Rhode Island chapter had already been moving to a more digital approach when the pandemic hit and was ready with virtual classes like this one for those who still wanted to take advantage of them. It's why we've been around for 100 years, because we're not doing the same program we were doing in 19... 19. You know, every year uh, we change it, we update it for the needs of the community, uh, the, the needs of the labor market. Jeff Carty is JA's executive vice president. He and Lee Lewis, who took over as president in 2007, were students together at Johnson and Wales and became familiar with JA through a partnership with the university. Carty was with us the day we watched the Brown wrestlers interact with the students. They've been doing that for several years now. The teachers love it, the administrators love it, the, the uh, students love it, and uh, we have them come back every year, and, and they're one of our most popular groups of kids to come back to deal with the elementary students. While the wrestlers are popular, Carty said the organization has worked very hard to recruit volunteers from a cross-section of business sectors. The heart of our programs are volunteers. You know, we don't have paid employees that just go in, teach from a textbook, and go home. You know, we bring in volunteers that share their experiences with the students. Our volunteers need to come from industries that are relevant to Rhode Island. Hospitality, tourism, you know, commercial fishing, uh, marine trades, you know, things like that, that really that there are local opportunities for those kids to go into. So that we're trying to stop some of that brain drain where kids aren't looking outside of Rhode Island, you know, for opportunities. Carty said a volunteer's first visit to the classroom can be daunting. I've seen some of the biggest business leaders in Rhode Island, and, and these are only college kids, but I can just imagine you see some of the biggest business leaders in Rhode Island that command boardrooms, you know, that, uh, but they go into th these classrooms and I've seen them shaking in their boots before they go to a, a third grade class to deal with third graders. <laughs> the thing about a third grader is they're going to ask you and tell you exactly what's on their mind, uh, where somebody else may filter it a little bit. They're going to ask you some of those blunt and pointed questions. But but once they break the ice and settle into a rhythm, nearly everyone comes back. I was excited and petrified at the same time. Steve Kitchen was a JA volunteer in the early 1990s. Now a vice president at New England Institute of Technology, he took over in July as JA's board chairman. When you see that you connect with a student or you connect with several of the students, it makes the opportunity uh, just all the more impactful for the volunteer. So I would tell you, I think that as much good as the, the, J, the JA volunteer does for the, for the students, that the students in turn light a candle 
in, within each and every volunteer that they touch. While JA has always had a presence in Providence, Kitchen said the organization made a decision a decade ago to concentrate on more urban areas. The breadth of students that we're, 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 we're connecting with now is far wider in terms of that urban focus. The curriculum has evolved, the way we deliver it has evolved, the preparation of the volunteers in terms of getting them ready and giving them the, the assistance they need. Um, all of those things have, have, I think, aided both the volunteer and the students in the classroom. Well Smith, who went to Central High School, has volunteered at a variety of schools in Providence. The teachers are burdened, to be honest with you. So having somebody else come in gives the teachers not just a break, but it also gives the students a different perspective so that what their teachers have been sort of drilling into them, oh gee, there's another grown up or adult that's come into this classroom and they sort of have the same mantra. So I do think that it helps support them. Three years ago, Junior Achievement launched JA Inspire, directly aimed at the state's eighth grade students. And at, at eighth grade, which is what Inspire is all about, there's, they should be thinking about that pathway. In eighth, in, if not sooner, but definitely in eighth grade, because as they're making decisions on where they want to go for high school, for if there's a pathway they want to pursue. It all began in an auditorium at Rhode Island College in 2017, with 180 students and 30 vendors. Last year, 8,100 eighth graders, 75% of all eighth graders in the state, made the pilgrimage to the Rhode Island Convention Center over two days, where they had 120 booths to choose from. At the first Inspire, a female police officer spoke to the students. It had an impact on one of the eighth grade girls. She goes, I was always interested in being a police officer, but being a woman, I didn't think that it was much of an opportunity for me. And I met this woman who is a, a police officer, and she goes, now I, she goes, I'm gonna be a police officer now. She goes, I know I can be one. And it was, number one, it was the pilot of Inspire, and that's exactly what we were trying to accomplish. And those who have volunteered the longest have a message for those considering giving it a try. It doesn't take a lot of time. You know, you can very quickly go through the curriculum, the, the, the documentation and the, the teacher's guide and the, you know, the volunteer's guide is incredible. You can't miss, you just have to follow it. You, I scribble my notes in and take it, you know, go through everything. They give you all of these incredible materials. Now it's also online. Think about the impact that you can have on a young person's life if you can widen their horizons and get them to appreciate just what opportunities they have to succeed in our country and in our state. This is, I hope, will have long-term impacts both for them and for our state and for our region. If you see this and um, you are even the least bit, you know, interested, follow through on it because you know, you think that you give so much to the students when in fact you get so much more back. Jim Hummel for the Rhode Island Spotlight.